In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can create uh, this banana using sort of the box modeling tools and looking at workflow in regards to working with a low poly mesh and using the smooth mesh preview and then subdividing it and uh, adding extra detail with insert edge loops and the multi-cut tool. Uh, yeah, I saw one where the reference was brought into the perspective view, which is problematic, right? So, and because like when you move the perspective, it just stays locked to the camera, um, which is, yeah, not, not so great. So we'll just get, get rid of that. So what we want to do is make sure we're in, say, like the front view and then bring the in image plane into this area. So under view, image plane, import image. And yeah, I've already set up my project folder properly and I've also got um, the banana image saved into the source images folder and so I can just load that up and so when you first bring it in you can actually move it around and scale, scale it up and so forth back into uh, the front view and if I press F I can get the full screen I'm going to create a cube to match the scale of the banana like so and then oh before I do that let's take that image plane and just push it back in the Z that way it doesn't sort of intersect and we're free from it all right so step one is really to you know block out the form using the extrude tool and I'm going to use both sides at, at the same time and control E for extrude or you can go up to uh, edit mesh extrude and then when you pull out the extrusion so you have to pull it out first and then you can swap the orientation because if I don't swap it from local okay, it will go in opposite directions. But if I swap it to world space, then I can move it up in separate directions. And yeah, not only move it, I can scale it by clicking on one of the cubes and scale it in a little bit as well. So we start to sort of taper as we go forward. Now to reactivate that same tool, I could use control E again, or you can just press the G key and it will activate the last tool used. So again, we'll do the same thing. Let's go up. All right, actually, we'll go back to local and then scale it that way. And yeah, one more time, just to get some nice form in there. Swap it over. And so, yeah, we've got kind of got like the basic structure, right? But if I, yeah, go back into uh, front view, I can see that, you know, I haven't really matched it. But the beauty of doing it in a low poly means that you can, you know, move stuff quite quickly. Uh, there's less to move. I can press four on the keyboard to bring up the wireframe or if I uh, come up to this icon here, it's called X-ray, and then I can see through my geometry. And what's really nice is now I go into uh, vertex mode by holding down the mouse uh, right button and selecting vertex. And you can just come through and marquee select. And what's interesting is when you marquee the, um, the vertice from the front view, because they're lined up, you actually select the vertice at the back as well. So when we move that one vertice, we're actually moving the front one and the back one. And so we can quickly just go around and make sure that our vertices are perfectly aligned. And what we're trying to do as well is retain a good edge flow so as the curvature of the banana goes, these horizontal lines start to move with that curvature. 
So when we subdivide it or add extra geometry to it, we'll get a nice bit of bit more information and a nice flow of that um, edge flow. Now this, see, I haven't lined it up to the end here, but what we're going to do later is cut it in the middle and add extra information in there. But let's just first of all go back and we'll continue to just do the stalk part. Might do that from the from here. Control E again, extrusion out, and then I can sort of scale it in. Uh, G extrudes it again. Go up to where it sort of changes shape. Um, let's just do it to there. And G again extrudes up and it sort of taper, tapers in. So just go out and check that out, see if it's okay. Yep, that looks fine. Um, so yeah, I'll go back to here and fix it up a little bit. So yeah, this is like a really nice quick way of working um, and it's really accurate. And there we have like, you know, a low polygon banana. So if we're, I'm just going to, if we're in a video game, right? And this banana was on a table, um, that'd be fine like that pretty much. Um, the further away from the camera, the smoother it looks. So when it's really tiny like that, it looks quite smooth, right? So if I zoom in, um, we start to see the angles of, on the uh, silhouette or the, prof the profile. All right, so now let's look at how we go about adding uh, detail. So there's two ways we can do it. We can just use the smooth mesh preview by pressing the two key or the three key. And what that does, it gives us a subdivision of the object. So if you create an object, you'll notice, um, say that with a cube, if I create a cube, we've just got a single cube. But if I go in here and change the divisions, maybe I'll make them two then, you know, we get that sort of subdivided and broken up. And the more subdivisions, the more each of the uh, faces are divided. So what's happening when we press the, the uh, two key is we're getting a preview of what that subdivision would look like. Now we can actually, so I'm just going to clone it quickly by holding shift and moving it. We can actually come up here and go to modify, convert smooth mesh preview to polygons, and then they'll give us a subdivided object. Now by default, the level of subdivision for a smooth mesh preview is set to um, two. So it's subdividing at two, at two levels. But we don't ha we don't have to use the subdivision or smooth mesh preview. We can actually use just the smooth tool. And to do that, if we go to the modeling toolkit, we click on smooth, and then we can see a subdivision of just one. And if we want to preview the two, you can see two, and you can even increase that. Be careful because it will, it will crash your computer if you go too high. Um, because you get way too many polygons. But in this case, a subdivision of two is a pretty good outcome. Or we can go to one. All right, but before we do that, I'll just set it to zero for a second. What I want to do is add the detail uh, so it's you know nice and curved around here and, and whatnot because if I just divide it at the moment it's sort of you know tapering in 
in areas that not quite want. So how do we how do we add extra detail? We can use uh, two tools. There's the insert edge loop tool, which is probably the easier one to use, and you just click on an edge and then it cuts that face in two. And then we can sort of, you know, move that around to give it a bit more form. Or we can use the multi-cut tool, which does a, the same job, but you have to hold down control and click on an edge. And then we can move that face around as well. If we go back here, this is the history of the object and it shows us everything that we've done to our object. It does make the object bigger and you can have conflicts within the history. So it's always a good idea to come up to edit, delete by type, delete history, and that will get rid of the history. We didn't have to do that now. We could have put another smooth tool um, on top, uh, which I'll do here. And yeah, and you can see that looks, looks pretty good. But you'll notice as well is it starts to come in on the object. Okay, so what we wanna do, this is the good thing about the Smooth Mesh Preview is you can load this up and you can see the curvature where it's happening. It's coming inside of this cage. So the cage is the low polygon version. So what you wanna do is come in here and move the cage so the smooth preview is matching the inner. When it's subdivided, it, it lines up perfectly. So the cage can sort of expand out a little bit. And then you get sort of really super accurate. And the beauty of doing this method is, you know, we're using low poly, um, cage therefore we only have to move a few vertices and we can move and control that curvature of the subdivided mesh underneath so i'll just turn off that go back to one and then go into object mode and press smooth and yeah we've got a perfectly lined up banana yeah maybe i might just leave it at a subdivision of two and there's our banana. Uh, we could add a little bit more detail. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail at the top here. Scale it in a bit. Might even put another one around here. So it holds the curvature. Now that we've uh, added the extra detail, let's finalize our model. So pressing one on the keyboard brings it back to uh, no smooth mesh preview. We'll go up into modeling toolkit, click on smooth. We'll subdivide it by two. Um, that looks good. And now if I press control A, it brings up the channel box. And we wanna sort of zero everything out and uh, get rid of the history as well. So we'll go up to edit, delete by type, delete history. Um, and we'll also go up to modify freeze transformations and that will zero everything out. And we'll just double check that our pivot points in the middle where we want it. Um, that looks good. And lastly, we just name our object with no spaces and we just save our scene. And if we're gonna use this in another project, we could save it in the scenes folder or we could even save it into the assets folder. 
and we're done. <laughs>